Okay, this sermon is entitled, Catholicism Teaches People to Reject the Finished Work of Christ on the Cross. And the subtitle would have to be, that's the only thing that Catholicism does. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 21 reads, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips. See la, for thou preventest him with the blessings of good, goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. Now, before I get into my notes, I'd like to just basically make it very clear that our salvation is based on the finished work of the cross and nothing else. And the Catholic Church is nothing but a demonic fabrication of, of, the, of the real church, you know, that Christ founded. And the Catholic Church is wicked as hell. It's, there's no salvation in Catholicism at all. They, they claim that there's no salvation outside of the church. I'm going to reverse the claim and say there's no salvation inside of that garbage, t- that trash teaching. And the Bible's very clear on this, and that's why we should hate this, this garbage. We should hate Catholicism, and we should expose it for what it is. Catholics are going to burn in hell. And I don't apologize for saying that, because you, you, cannot, you cannot reject what Christ has done for you. Um, and that's all Catholicism does. It does it in many different ways, and we're going to look at that. But let's take a look at John 19 and verse 30. It reads, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, this means that he paid for our salvation in full. It is finished translates into tetelesta, which means paid in full. So, we see that salvation is done, it's complete. We see this again in John chapter 17. It says in verse 1, we'll stop at verse um, 5, it reads, "These, These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now look at verses 3. Three, it says, in ver- verses 3 through 5, make it clear that our salvation is complete. It says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before, be- before the world was. This tells us that our salvation is done. Jesus Christ did all the work. He died, he was buried, he rose again. The Bible says, believe on him, trust in him alone. We're saved by faith alone in Christ alone. We're saved by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. And the Catholics do not believe that. And that's because they're just a bunch of unregenerate, you know, false converts, and that's all they are, and it's all they ever will be. Now let me grab my notes and explain to you why Catholicism rejects the finished work of the cross. Number one, you know, Catholic masses. What are they doing at the mass? They're re-crucifying Christ at every mass. And that basically is, is their way of you know, implying that death, burial, and resurrection was not enough, and that Christ has to be re-crucified every single you know, week or whatever. It's a bunch of garbage. The Bible says in Romans chapter, let's go ahead and turn to Romans chapter 6, I'm going to refute everything they believe, because I'm, I'm so sick of this stupid teaching, all these teachings. Romans chapter 6, it says in verse 10, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Christ only had to die once, and that once was enough. <clears throat> so the first way they reject the finished work of the cross is by basically rendering it something that has to be repeated, a recurring event. Okay. Number two is the belief system of purgatory. Now think about it. They don't believe Jesus Christ actually paid it all at the cross, so you have to pay for some of your sins in purgatory. Okay? It's kind of like you're in a sensory deprivation tank, where or where it's like some it's like you're having to, to to be boiled in some pot like a pot, and then your sins get purged, you know, slowly, progressively, you know, and, and the more sins you have, the longer you have to stay in there. It's a bunch of junk. There's, there's no such teaching in the Bible. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter uh, 1, let's go ahead and turn to Hebrews chapter 1. In Hebrews chapter 1, in verse 3, it reads, Who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, 
when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, we don't need purgatory. Christ already purged all our sins away when he died, when he died on the cross. But see, if you think that purgatory is necessary, then you, you are rejecting what he did. You're saying it's not enough, and that's why people have to undergo their own self-purgation. And this whole concept intimates that Christ didn't in fact pay it all, but the Bible says he did pay it all. So, this is what Catholicism teaches. The next thing on the list is, of course, work salvation. They believe you have to do good works. They believe you have to have faith that works with love. That's what they say. They take that, that verse out of context in Galatians. They believe that, you know, faith alone is not sufficient. And that, that what they're really saying is Christ is not sufficient. They don't believe on the finished work of the cross, so they add their own works, and they're going to go to hell, and it's, this is a bunch of trash, and that's what this is. And something's got to be said about this, because this system is straight out of the pits of hell. Okay, the next thing on the list is they add other mediators. You know, you have the co-redemptrix, or the co-mediatrix, and you know, they, 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 they turn to Mary. You know, Hail Mary, and then they, they, they think that that's another way to get to God. The Bible says there is one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. And that, that alone is, is a rejection of what Christ did. Okay, the next thing on the list is, of course, uh, ha confessing your sins to a priest. What that's doing is that's like superseding or trumping, you know, Jesus Christ and what he did for us, and the fact that the Bible tells us that we can, you know, boldly come to the throne of grace, we can, we can confess our sins to God. They're saying we should confess our sins to a sinful, mortal man. That's a wicked sin is all this is. Okay? Their, their form of baptism denotes that Christ did not finish anything. Now, a regular baptism, as found in the scripture, it's considered a trine immersion. Trine meaning that we baptize you in the, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But when a person is you know, immersed into water, they go all the way down into the water, they come all the way back up, they're completely wet, they're completely soaked, and this represents the fact that they have all their sins washed away. That's what a baptism represents. Their sins are buried, and, and, then, and then when Christ rose again, the sins are removed completely. They're gone. That's a real baptism. That's what it represents. But they, what they do is they, they sprinkle. And the sprinkling would just represent the fact that only you, you get a couple sins covered. You get a, about, you know, a little handful of sins covered. Whereas a real baptism represents you get all your sins covered, and that these stupid unsaved Catholics don't believe Christ paid for anything because they still think a mortal sin will send you to hell, and no sin can send a person to hell if they're saved. Because Jesus Christ washed, us, washed all our sins away, past, present, and future, venial, mortal, whatever. It doesn't even matter. All sins are, are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, let's go ahead and turn there. 1 John chapter 1, and look at verse 7, and it reads, It says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. In 1 John chapter 1, uh, 3 and verse 5 it says and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin he took away all our sins because if he didn't take away all our sins he'd still have sin on him and he can't have any sin he did not sin in him is no sin our sins have been washed away completely 100% that's what the Bible teaches Okay, Catholics don't have any assurance of their salvation because they're not saved Okay, they don't believe in assurance they call it the sin of presumption. It's just a bunch of wicked, you know, perfidious, nefarious, pernicious, demonic garbage is all it is. It's sick. It's twisted. It's warped. It's, it's as wicked as hell. And that's why Catholics are going to drop into hell, and they need to get saved by simply trusting in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation. You know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, they don't even believe on the real Christ at all. Because what did their Christ accomplish? Nothing. Okay? So, let me go down the list again. Here are the ways that they reject the finished work of the cross. Number one, the re-crucifixion at recurring masses. Number two, purgatory. Number three, they add works. Okay? You can't add works to what Christ did. Okay? Number four, other mediators. Number five, sprinkling, which denotes a like a no coverage of sin. Okay? And then, of course, they, they go to priests, and it's all man-made garbage, it's all a big fat lie. They don't believe Jesus accomplished anything, and they're going to go to hell, and that's what the, that's the way it is. 
So do we don't consider Catholics Christians? I consider them antichrists. I consider them devils, just like I consider Calvinists devils and Arminians. And, and that's what Catholicism teaches, that you can lose your salvation. I should just add that to the list. Loss of salvation means that Christ didn't pay for anything. Something's either finished or it's not. You can't mess up something that's finished. You can't lose something that's finished. You can't, you know... You can't have God go back on his word if he absolutely finished something. Jesus Christ did finish our salvation, and therefore it cannot be lost. Once you're saved, you're always saved. And that's just another thing they don't believe because they're all going to go to hell because they're, they're wicked and they're unsaved. And somebody needs to say something about it. And we need to stop pretending like they're saved and they're not. We know they're not. There's no salvation in Catholicism. You need to get away from that, ju- that junk, and you need to believe the Bible, and that's what they don't believe. They don't believe in sola scriptura. They don't believe in faith alone. They don't believe in salvation by- through grace. They-, they have a fake version of grace. They say uh, you have to stay in the state of grace. You have to remain in grace. Look, you have a standing in grace by faith alone, in Christ alone, according to Romans chapter 5. Let's go ahead and turn there. There's no such thing as getting out of God's grace. God's grace is infinite. And it's eternal, and then I don't, and then they're it's just just a bunch of baloney is what they teach. As long as you have a standing, and how does anyone even know if they still have a standing in grace according to that system? How do you know if you've done enough works? How do you know if you've confessed enough sins? You don't you don't have any assurance. There's no knowledge of anything in this system. It's just a bunch of stupid, perfunctory, you know, liturgical, ritualistic, ceremonial. It's garbage, is what it is. You know, coming and taking. You know, they believe that the, uh, you know, the, the communion is, is like literal, the literal blood of Jesus and the, the literal body. Come on. It's not. It's just a symbolism. And this whole teaching is just a bunch of stupidity. The Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That means that we cannot get out of grace. Because that very standing in grace is what gives us the hope of the glory of God. And, and we wouldn't have that hope if we could be lost somehow. So it's all stupidity. It's all works-based. It's all man-made. It's all demonic. It came from the, the pits of hell. And that's where it's leading people, to the pits of hell. So Catholicism is nothing but a rejection of the finished work of the cross. And that's all it is. That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.